and welcome to Faragadamu. It's been a while since the African Union started presiding over the great Ethiopian Renaissance Dam negotiations. What is happening these days? Well, the heavy rains don't seem to be helping. My guest today, Dr. Zarihuna Bebe of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, is also a member of the GERD negotiation team representing Ethiopia. A very warm welcome to the program. Thank you, Erwin. Sudanese and the Egyptians were supposed to be in town to continue with the negotiations, right, this week? Yes. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, we are expecting them to come back to the negotiation table on the 14th of September. And we are waiting for the confirmation from Sudan, actually. And Egypt was okay with that when we ended our meeting on the 28th of August. But it is up to the Sudanese. So, but they failed to show up, didn't they? Yeah, uh, the idea was when we finalized our discussions on the 28th of uh, August, uh, Ethiopia and Egypt agreed to continue the discussion and the negotiation on the 14th of September after two weeks of break. And the Sudan said, uh, first, we have to consult our prime minister. And they said it's a matter of uh, national significance and we need uh, a direction and a new impetus to move to the next level, as they say it. And I don't think they have made their internal consultations yet, maybe due to the uh, flood and the different uh, precarious situations that the country is in, maybe. So uh, when they come to the negotiation table here, w w would that be any different from the, one that we, the ones that we have seen before? Uh, it will not be different, actually. We have uh, now a process under the African Union framework, and uh, uh, during the last meeting of the AU heads of state and government, uh, the Bureau of the AU heads of state and government, uh, by which our Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed and Sudan's Prime Minister Hamdok and uh, Egypt's President Abdel Fattah al Sisi participated. They agreed to uh, expedite the process of finalizing the negotiation and uh, reach an agreement on the uh, filling of the dam, that is, or understanding, and then to continue the uh, negotiation on a comprehensive water agreement uh, that will uh, bind all the countries uh, as the Nile the Transponder River Basin. Uh, but in the meantime, when we are expected to continue the negotiation, Sudan and Egypt suspended the negotiation uh, on the grounds they needed internal consultations with different stakeholders, On first on the 27th of August and then on, uh, on the 27th of July and then on the 4th of August. And then on the 60th of August, we had the meeting of the uh, foreign ministers and water uh, affairs ministers of the three countries. And uh, that was a meeting called by Minister Pandor of South Africa, the Minister of International Relations and Cooperation. And they agreed to work on a single document and to synthesize the documents of the three countries and to have one zero draft document as an you know just to start the negotiation and uh, that we have started and we have to finalize that and it's a very pretty tricky one yes absolutely you know just uh, the focus for the uh, last how many years since we have started the negotiation nine years but it was on and off we can say that we had been we have been negotiating for nine years but, uh, you know, the, po the, 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 the situation was actually affected by the fixation on the position of the countries rather than focusing on the interests of the three countries. That was one challenge. Now, when we start to work on a single document, we have to focus on our interests rather than reiterating our positions. And the good thing about the AU framework and the negotiation that we are undertaking under the AU framework is it helped us to focus on our interests rather than our positions. Now, in this document, we are working on that. If you see the Grand Ethiopian Nessence Dam, the issues of discussion are on the first feeling in annual operation of the guard. It shouldn't go beyond that. So the first feeling of the dam we need to see the hydrology and what if we have wet season, what if we have average season, and what if we have drought seasons or dry seasons. And th th these are the issues and very technical, and we could have reached an agreement long time ago. But, but you did, we, di we didn't. Yeah, we, we didn't. And then we started filling uh, the dam unilaterally, and the, and the two countries are saying we cannot trust Ethiopians. No, we didn't fill the dam unilaterally. Uh, actually, if you look at this dam, it's a national project. 
uh, as a national project, Ethiopia has the right to fill its dam. Because Ethiopia is not filling the dam fetching water from Hayas Swan Dam or the Mirue Dam in Egypt and Sudan, respectively. Rather, we are filling our dam uh, by using our own legitimate and equitable share of water. And the first year of uh, filling, it is 4.9 BCM, which is very small amount of water. That, that, that's one thing. Second, if you look at the agreement on the Declaration of Principles, Principle 5 is very clear on this. We are to discuss and negotiate on the first filling and annual operation of the dam in parallel with the construction of the dam. You know, th there are different ways of filling a dam. Some just first build the dam and then start filling once they complete the, the concrete or the rock fill dam. But that's one approach. But in our case, a smart design, and we construct and we fill, we construct. Keep on, keep on constructing. As, as, uh, yeah. The filling goes in tandem with the construction of the dam. But they were not consulted, were they? Uh, they? They know the information. These are the, the these are uh, these these are issues that they know. And if you look at, for instance, the issues of convergence between the three countries, the issues of agreement, one includes the filling of the dam. How to fill it? When to fill it? For example, we have stage-based filling, and the first year filling is 4.9 BCM, and the second year filling is 13.5 BCM. This we have agreed. And the first two years of filling is the non-controversial uh, filling schedule that we have agreed. The Egyptians have endorsed it, the Sudanese have endorsed it, and uh, it's not about the, um, the amount of water, actually. It's about the principle. And as I said, the declaration of principle, the agreement that the three countries reached and signed by the leaders of the three countries, that's one thing. And throughout the negotiation, the most non-controversial part of the agreement or the negotiation is the first year's feeling, for example. They have agreed to this. That's one thing. And another most important thing is we have given them information. Throughout the negotiation, we have notified them, despite we do not have the obligation to be honest. Because the norm in the Nile Basin is, you know, no one consults you and they build their dam, they fill their dam, and whenever you ask them, they would uh, answer, you know, it's none of your business, it's our water, it's our dam. That is what Ethiopia was told. When Egypt built the highest one dam or when it built the, uh, New, Valley, uh, the, the New Valley projectors in Toshka and Al Salam. So, but Ethiopia was generous and very kind, to be honest. And it's notified them in the negotiation process it, f from the very beginning. In September, for instance, last year, in 2019, September, Ethiopia notified that Ethiopia will feel or will start the filling of the dam this rainy season. And they have to adjust the operation of their dams accordingly because they know the amount of water. It is 4.9 and Ethiopia is not going to, uh, you know, uh, increase the uh, water that it would retain in the, behind the dam because our filling of the dam is constrained by the level of construction, the stage of construction. That's why we are abide by the Declaration of Principles. We are true to our own words. Why was it necessary to take the negotiation, the, the forum over to the United States, to Washington, D.C.? Uh, well, uh, if you look at the genesis of uh, how we went to the uh, Washington and how we have the uh, World Bank in uh, the United States involved with us, observers, and we have been negotiating uh, for uh, a few years, and the Egyptian president asked the president of uh, the United States if he could mediate Ethiopia and Egypt and Sudan on the Grand Ethiopian Sudan. And we believe uh, we are partners with the United States. The United States of America is a friend of all of us. And when they have asked, uh, they want to listen to us and how the negotiation is progressing, we are okay, and we have to explain our positions. We have to explain our interests. This is international relations, and this is diplomacy. And when we went to the United States, what we have heard was that as if Ethiopia was diverting the Nile outside its course, and as if Ethiopia was building... Uh, an unnecessary dam on the Nile, and uh, as if it was, and it is a political dam, you know, to harm Egypt. But we explained uh, that we build, we are building the Grand Ethiopian Dam out of necessity. Uh, 
building the Nile in Ethiopia, as we call it. Abai is a matter of survival for Ethiopia. We need to feed our people. We need to electrify our villages and towns. We have 65 million people without access to electricity. And we are building industrial parks here and there, but without access to electricity. And we need to build dams. It is out of necessity that we are building dams. We explained this, and they said, are you going to war? No, we are not going to war. There is nothing that would take us to war. What are the issues? Let us see. It's about the feelings, about the annual operation. We can discuss and resolve this technically. And they asked us to mediate us. And we said, no. There is nothing that you could mediate. In, 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 because the three countries have the, the experts, have the knowledge, and they can resolve their differences. And actually, our minister, His Excellency Ato Gaddu and Dr. Seleshi, explained to the President of the United States and the Secretary of the Treasury of the United States that the leaders of the three countries have given instruction to continue the negotiation. And we had four technical meetings remained to be concluded uh, as per the agreement reached on the 15th of May 2018. That, that was uh, our, our argument. And then, said, then they said, uh, let us then attend your meetings as observers. We, and we said, okay. They were observing, and initially, if you look at the negotiation process, the first two, three meetings were smooth. Up until the turning point and came exactly later, later, when the end of January, actually, end of January 2020, uh, until that, you know, everything was smooth, and they, they were really supporting us. But th that was uh, unfortunate, actually. Yeah. So when we, you know, the, the African Union, as we later knew, joined the bandwagon to try to fix this problem. I mean, there are just some people who really argue that it actually came late when the negotiations started going downhill. Uh, well, uh, Tafara, if you look at the issues, as I said, the issues of the issue of uh, the Grand Ethiopia Renaissance Dam, they're very technical. And uh, these are issues of the three countries. To be honest, uh, the issues uh, do not require the involvement of third parties. And uh, when we brought it back to the African Union and the idea, this is an African issue. And we have, if we have African problems, we said, we need to have African solutions. We are Africans, and as African brothers and sisters, and drinking from the same river, we can resolve our differences. Yes, uh, it's unfortunate that uh, between June, uh, between February, mid February, and end of June, uh, uh, early early June, yeah, we the first week of June, we did not have that much. Pro we didn't have that much progress. But once the African Union involved, uh, we are really showing a very good and remarkable progress. Yes, in the meantime, the Egyptians took the matter to the United Nations Security Council, and there were exchange of letters and submissions of positions and papers, uh, dozens of pages, and uh, th th that was one incident. But if you look at the African Union process, the most important thing is these leaders are seen eye to eye, and rather than reiterating their positions, the platform uh, paved the way for the countries to focus on their interests. That's one thing. Second one, uh, you know, if you look at the Nile, it has historical legacy, colonial legacy. And unless we stand together, we have, for example, the Africa Agenda 2063, we have to integrate as a continent. And... Uh, His Excellency, the President of Republic of South Africa and current chairperson of the African Union, is doing a very great job in this regard. Because the African Union process, the leaders were able to focus on the crux of the matter, the most important challenge in the process. As I said, the focus would have been on the feeling and operation of the girl, but Egypt is trying to, you know, use this as an opportunity to impose it is colonial wishes on Ethiopia. Egypt is a bullying factor, is that what you say? Absolutely. So does it has it got any influence more than Ethiopia in the negotiations? N not really, actually, because we are determined to safeguard, protect our national interests, that's one thing. And we are able to show the issue is not the feeling of the dam. 
we could have focused on the feeling of the dam, but Egypt is taking the matter outside the most important critical issues. Like, for instance, Egypt wants to use the negotiations on the filling and operation of the dam as an opportunity to maintain colonial era treaties and to block Ethiopia from using the Nile in the future and to make the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam as the only share of Ethiopia. And the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam also to be only and only non consumptive water use project. Th that's unacceptable for Ethiopia, as it denied Ethiopia's legitimate and natural right. Interesting. But back to, the, to one of the questions I raised earlier, the fact that Egypt primarily didn't show up for this meeting this, this month here in Addis Ababa, does that say anything? Yeah, it's uh, actually Egypt agreed to the meeting for the 14th of May, uh, the 14th of September meeting. Uh, they were okay with that. We have. Let me rephrase the question. C can't the African, the African Union prevail over Egypt and Sudan to show up here? Uh, now, you know, if you look at the Nile Basin, including Ethiopia, we are now in a very difficult situation as flood is one of the challenges in our three countries. Egypt is, for instance, declared to its prime minister that it is uh, preparing itself uh, to, uh, you know, mitigate the impact of flooding as the Nile is shown a very high level record of flood in, in the system. And Sudan, for the last two months almost, is struggling with this impact and we uh, anticipate that they are not showing up uh, especially Sudan which said to conform for the meeting on the 14th of September is due to such factors and one of the reasons that they claimed when they said they will, put, they will conform uh, their availability for the meeting on the 14th of September was consultation with their leadership, they didn't uh, have the consultation with their uh, prime minister so far. So once they have uh, conducted that, uh, uh, that uh, consultation with their prime minister, I hope they will show up. But uh, now, you know, it, it is in their court, you know, it is in their best interest to continue the negotiation. Are there things that e e the Egyptians need to do as far as the night is concerned? For example, control their own population growth. Because depending solely on the Nile. You know, one of the challenges, the common challenges of all the Nile Basin countries, the 11 Nile Basin countries, is population growth. It's very rapidly growing. And by 2050, we will have more than 530 million people who will be living directly on the basin. And nearly a billion people who might live in the whole countries, the 11 countries. And Egypt, uh, Egypt's population is what, close to 100 million? Yeah, it is al almost more than 100 million. The same is true with Ethiopia. And U Uganda, you have s very growing population as well. But being on the receiving end of these waters of the Nile, yeah. don't the Egyptians need to be a little bit concerned with that figure? Uh, I, I believe all the Basin countries should be concerned about this. And this is a common challenge that needs a common solution. And the best solution would be cooperation at the Basin level rather than following a piecemeal approach and it's a basin by say basin approach we have the Nile Basin Initiative for instance uh, very tested and as a transitional institution it helped the countries to come together and we have the cooperative framework agreement negotiated and signed by six countries of course all the basin countries negotiated it and you know uh, the ratification of this instrument by all the riparian countries will uh, really will be helpful to uh, mitigate such impacts from population growth as well because they will focus on which areas to cooperate and also to enhance the management and utilization of the river. But most importantly, Egypt, unlike we believe for years, is the richest country when it comes to water availability. Upstream countries are water scarce countries. If you look at their groundwater, the, the, they are one of the richest countries in the world. They have, you know, more than 55,000 billion cubic meters of water, and which is equivalent to more than 500 years flow of the Nile. And now they have been, you know, just since recently, the Egyptians are focusing on desalination plants, both in the Mediterranean Sea and in the uh, Red Sea. Uh, so coastal lands. So if you look at Egypt's water, availab the availability of water resources in Egypt, th these are available water resources, alternative water resources. And I think the most important thing is to reduce or to minimize their dependency on the Nile. 
That's the most important thing. And there is ample opportunity on that. That's one thing. And us, the Beijing, the Nile Beijing countries should work on rehabilitating the environment. That will also increase the flow and also enhance the quality of water in the system, and which, which would be very helpful to the building countries. When the three countries keep on negotiating, talking about this, obviously, understandably, and understandably so, the other riparian countries, they're silent. Uh, not necessarily, because the issues of discussion between the three countries is on a single project. One dam. But a defining one. It's, it's a defining one, yes, but whenever it will have an impact on the management and utilization of the Nile at the base level, Ethiopia has explained its concerns to all the building countries, to their ambassadors here and to their leaderships as well in their respective capitals. We have communicated this. And that's why the African Union, under the African Union framework, uh, the current chairperson, His Excellency President Cyril Ramaphosa, you know, he recognized the crux of the matter, as I said earlier. That has to do with the management and utilization of the Nile at the base level. And that's why all the building countries, need, they need to, you know, uh, finalize the process of ratification of the CFA. And only only, only half of them have, have signed the CFA, yeah. right? I mean, as you just Yeah, yeah. We have four ratifications. And it has been on the table for many years. Yeah, it's nearly why? now 19 years. Yes, and why? Why? Yeah, I can explain that, actually. Uh, we have now four ratifying countries, Ethiopia, Rwanda, Tanzania, and Uganda. And Burundi, for different reasons, its internal political situation wasn't okay. And uh, the late president, President Nkurunziza, he clearly told us that he in the process of ratification, uh, but he had a new uh, assembly, and they had to explain the significance of uh, the CFA, the instrument. And Kenya is in it is following its internal uh, process, internal uh, legal uh, process of ratification. And South Sudan was in the process of accession as well. But the internal political situations of the countries. And Kenya's ratification of the instrument was delayed, as we know, due to the internal political situation in the country before a few years. These, these are the only reasons. But, you know, if you look at the process of ratifying such agreements, as it's a very defining instrument, uh, it might take time, we understand that, but sooner or later, the countries uh, will ratify the uh, instrument and we will be moving forward and we will have the Nile River Basin Commission. Well, on that, I think we have to end our discussion. Thank you very much indeed, Darim. It was really a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you.